Mr. Chair, I did say Mr. Fletcher Mr. Uh, Thank you, uh, Sue. Um, I, there have been uh, quite a few issues raised uh, in the debate uh, this afternoon, but to speak first to the passports, which seem to slip through the conversation in Select Committee uh, kind of under the radar. It, it wasn't an issue of great debate, and yet the question was raised, and it was raised again uh, quite strongly uh, by the Honourable Member, member that um, we are asking in this legislation to take our right to remove a passport from one year, which it is currently, to three. Now, I asked numerous times, are we not already complying with our requirements to the UN Security Council Resolution 2178? And I was told repeatedly that yes. Under current law, we comply with the resolution. We are uh, prohibiting the movement of ter terrorist fighters. We are prohibiting them from leaving our country if we know that that is their intent. And we are prohibiting them from moving across borders in different parts of the world. So that legislation exists already. And so when the Honourable Minister said how sensible this legislation sounded, I had to agree with him at the time because he is such a sensible sounding member. But when you have to, when you actually ask the question, well, doesn't that compliance already exist in our New Zealand law, then you have to say, where is the sense? How is it sensible that we now remove the right of New Zealand citizens their access to their passport for a period of three years when in select committee it was identified and discussed that already there are a very small number of individuals whose passports have been removed and that action has been taken, but it was also noted that at no point has it been necessary to extend that period of time. At no point has the SIS come forward and said, we need more time, we need to extend it further. Where is the sense in that, Mr Chair? Yes, and the, um, Dr Kennedy was speaking just now about our compliance with UN Resolution 2178. And I acknowledge, yes, we do comply. We already comply. But actually, what was noted there also was that they spoke of only that part, sir. In the legislation, they made reference to a part of the resolution. There is another, there are several other parts that asks this nation, this government, to please, please take account of your citizens' human rights and their rights to privacy. That is also in the resolution. It explicitly states, it explicitly expects government to take consideration of individual human rights and privacy, and it even speaks further about the practice of undermining those rights leading to radicalisation. And that is something that we absolutely must avoid. And at the moment, with the rhetoric that has been used in the presentation of this bill to the New Zealand public and the rhetoric that has been used to present this bill to the members of the House, we are radicalising a minority group within this country and in fact we are already not complying with UN Resolution 2178. We are countermanding the requirements uh, there already. I just want to add my statement around the definitions of terrorism, the definitions that have been uh, referenced in the legislation. The, it has already been acknowledged and it has been said very eloquently and I am just adding my voice and the voice of New Zealand First to this conversation that actually there is no sensible definition of terrorist. The ter freedom terrorist fight is not even mentioned in the legislation apart from the title. I mean, the, the ludicrous statements and the use of reference to legislation where we've had uh, members of uh, this House investigated by these security agencies under those current definitions seems to be counterintuitive and not just that, sir, but undermining the democracy and the human rights of New Zealand citizens. We are not clear on what defines a terrorist. We are not clear on what 
contributing to might look like. We are not clear on what. Thank you.